Next on Startup, we travel to Minneapolis, Minnesota to meet with Roger, a true bicycle connoisseur and one of the owners of Alley Cats, a shop that sells, repairs, and restores bicycles. Then we swing by Iowa City, Iowa to talk to Julie, a former nursing student who grew up cooking family recipes of traditional Italian food and created Zaza's, an Italian specialty market that makes fresh homemade pasta daily. All of this and more is next on Startup. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail, so I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on Harmon Place in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm gonna to talk to Roger, one of the owners of Alley Cat Cycles, a bicycle sales, repair, and restoration shop in the bicycle capital of the United States. Let's go hear their story. The term bicycle was not introduced until the late 1860s, when it was coined in France to describe a new kind of two-wheeler with a mechanical drive. Today, about 100 million bicycles are manufactured worldwide each year. Maintaining a bike annually costs about 20 times less than maintaining and driving a car. Roger and Kelly became passionate about bicycles from the first time their feet touched the pedals. And with Alley Cats, they found a way to do what they love and make a living. Start by telling us who you are and, and where we are right now. My name is Roger Kelker and uh, you're in uh, my bike shop in Minneapolis. It's called Alley Cat Cycles. Okay. I co-own it with uh, Callie Jersa. I was born in the cities. I grew up just on the other end of downtown, uh, down on Nicollet Island. What's your education? Uh, my education, I went to North High School. Um, okay. There was money for me to go to college. and At that age, I assumed I knew everything, so I never went to college. Have you always ridden bicycles your whole life? I've been on a bicycle without training wheels since the age of four. Okay, so you just love, you love bikes. I was endlessly fascinated with bikes from a, a very young age. I started messengering in 93, and then I just quit that. I was doing that for 21 years. And wow, you were a bike messenger. Yeah. Did you do anything besides bike messaging, or was that your primary source of um, income? Over the years, I've printed t-shirts, um, I've waited tables, I've worked on an organic farm, uh, I was a telemarketer in my youth, but mostly a lot of the jobs that I've done have involved me working with my hands and, yeah. and using a, a bit of intellect. Yeah. Not a tremendous sum. <laughs> when did it go from uh, sort of a hobby and something that you did in your spare time or messengering to, to this? I've been working on bikes sort of in earnest, say the past 15 years, you know, and had a true in stand and a bike stand and all my tools. Um, I had a studio space over North Minneapolis that I had all my tools and all my bikes set up mm -hmm. and then would build bikes for messengers or work on my own bikes. We've been here now, this is our third year. Is this the original space that this you guys moved the, into? This is the original space. At okay. first, um, we looked, there was a, a spot over in Bryn Mawr, Minneapolis, which is not far from my neighborhood. We went into negotiations with them and the moment that we really sat down, mm -hmm. they doubled the price on us. Oh, come on. And so, right, so this was in December. I said, yeah. well, you guys really don't want a bike shop then because if you're doubling the price and it's December, 
yeah. we won't be able to do it. Because those are probably some leaner months, huh? like October through May. Yep, off season is a hard one. Do you own the building? Is it a lease? Um, we, we do lease here. Um, we went into negotiations, but first we were looking for the this space and the larger space behind us, and mm -hmm. that was too much money. Yeah. And um, the owner of the building, they were uh, not too interested in, in reducing the price just because it's it's a pretty high demand area. We had to sell them on the concept of what we were doing as well, which was difficult at first because they didn't quite understand what it was that, you know, bicycle repair, restoration, new bikes, but that um, it just, it didn't quite gel when we were speaking with them. And then- um, Even with all the other bike shops in the, in the city, they didn't get it? So. You, you would think. But anyways, <laughs> now they, they love us. Yeah. And they love us, they, they realize that, that what an attribute we are to just the complex, but also the neighborhood. Yeah. Why, why do you come here? Like, what's the affiliate? Is it the owners? Uh, is it just the style of bike? Like, what defines why a person would go to one shop over another? Well, in my case, it's all of the above. They're very genuine people. It's social. They, uh, you come by when you've been riding a while and you sit and you chat and you talk about the bikes they're fixing. <laughs> Everybody bikes in this town. There's so many trails and parks that it's almost natural to do it. How'd you get the financing to open up the shop? The financing, we uh, basically scrounged our money and that we started basically with like $5,000. Total. That was it. And that, But that said, I had about five grand worth of tools and about 10 grand worth of bikes and ephemera. So I had a bunch of stuff and a lot of the antiques that just sort of flesh the place out. When did you start making money or was that immediate because you already had a clientele? Just about almost right away. I mean, the thing yeah. is, I, I just quit messengering. And so for that first few years, I was still messengering. So a fair amount of messengers would come through and still, you know, try to support us. A lot of people within the neighborhood also wanted to see a neighborhood bike shop. I, I hear it at least a few times a week where people say they're glad that they have a neighborhood bike shop. Logo, name, design, all that. Um, was that a, an extremely costly venture to get that into place? Um, no, this is another one where we got creative. And we had um, the business name when we were originally, we were called by a different name that was difficult for people to remember. What was so it? So it was Kitsone Cycles. I'm sorry, what was it? Uh, Kitsone, That's okay, all right, okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> so we had a logo contest to come up with our logo, which I believe we have the coolest logo out of any in the city. And it was a young man who works at a local ad agency. For us to get a logo of, of that caliber, yeah. um, and it was free. Because it was Correct. a contest. Yeah. Well, we had a contest, and what he got was $150 in store credit. So our logo cost us $150. In store credit, yeah. Yes. Facebook, you guys pretty active? Um, yeah. Somewhat. I mean, Callie gets on it again more than I do. Yeah. Um, I, I put plenty of cool photos on there, so I got hooked yeah. up my phones so when I see stuff. I am always add stuff to the site. Nice. How often do people change bikes? I mean, it, or is it just maintenance, or is it always new customers? Because it seems like a big purchase that I would make and be good for a few years, you know? Right. How, what is it like? Um, we get, like, you're pretty right on about that. Like, a lot of dedicated cyclists will typically have more than one bike. They'll okay. usually have a couple of different bikes. Um, they'll have, like, an off-season, wet weather, snow bike. They'll have a summer bike. They'll sometimes have a fast bike. Talk about the partnership, and, and what is it like having a business partner for people that are considering you know, partnership? Um, you have to keep an open mind. Um, you have to be patient. You've been friends for a long time? Or? I didn't know her that well, and I think to a degree that benefited us. I'm sure. Um, I, um, I had a business before with my girlfriend that worked out well, um, but that could cause friction at times, and there could be spillover from personal life and what have you, and so I consider myself fortunate that I got somebody who, she's great with people, she's a good mechanic, she's a genuinely nice person, um, and um, responsible. People do the like credit card swipe things, you sure. know, like you know, Square, Go Payment, this right. that. Um, has that kind of changed the playing field for you guys a little bit? We do accept credit cards. Okay. And that was one of the things that we decided to set up from day one. And we do get cash. We we accept checks. I've told sure. people you could you could bring me food and some money, and I would accept that. I believe that approximately seventy to eighty percent of our sales consist of credit cards. On a bicycle, you can travel three times faster than you can walk for roughly the same amount of energy. So what are we doing? With this, I'm actually, this guy has had a, a rear derailleur issue. And so his shifting, because it's index shifting, is not correct. And so what I'm gonna go do is run through his gears here and see if I can get it to dial in. There's a barrel adjuster here. Okay. And what we do is we do small tweaks until I get it to climb up and down on the cassette um, cleanly. 
Gotcha. I'm staying engaged in those gears every time I move it up and down without issue. How'd you learn how to how to do all this stuff, man? Trial and error, or somebody teach you? Um, a lot of it was trial and error. Um, was uh, you know, and I did have there some pointers that I had, and that I also have had a lot of friends that were mechanics as well. So down here, we've got a lot of bikes that we keep stored. Um, is so this all inventory? A lot of this is inventory stuff that we'll actually be selling. Some of these bikes are on consignment. Um, a lot of these bikes over here are bikes that are, are either going to be worked on or are finished in our customer bikes. What's for sale over here? What do you have? Um, right now, like uh, this, I recently got this uh, Schwinn Collegiate Sport 5. It's a smaller one. Um, didn't pay much for it. That one I'll rehab. We'll put that out the door at 250. That's an 80s Schwinn Traveler. Um, that one I'm actually redoing for a customer. Okay, uh, that's a cool bike. I guess the next logical step would be to take one of these bad boys for a spin. I've got a bike for you, let's go upstairs. All right. According to the NBDA, you should look closely before taking on the difficult task of starting a bicycle business. Make sure you can muster the excitement and creativity for things like merchandising, buying strategies, accounting, advertising, employees, and of course, sweeping the floor. You're three years into this space right now. How's it going? Like, are you making money, doing well? Are you happy? Kind of talk about just yourself. Um, I'm happy and, and that where we're at, we're really busy. And compared Good. to last year, I mean, every year we've been trending, you know, it's not by large sums, but we're making more money every year. Cool. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs out there that have a dream or want to turn their hobby into a business? What is the best piece of advice that you could give to them? Um, make sure that you do something you love because it's going to be, um, most, but you can do everything right in a business and still sometimes not make a success of it. Sure. And so you have to be prepared to put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. All right. So thank you for letting us come in and invade your space today. Oh, I really awesome. appreciate it, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for picking us. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Roger and Kelly do it? Let's find out. They started with under $1,000 in the bank, but turned a profit in year one, earning over $60,000. They pooled personal resources and spent around $5,000 total to open the business, and they've remained profitable for the last three years. The one word that Roger and Kelly use to describe what it takes to make it in business is dedication. Gearing up to start a business can be a vicious cycle. So you should always meet up to go over everything in detail, maybe at a restaurant if you can't handle bars. Either way, entrepreneurs should always be tirelessly peddling their ideas. That way, you'll always end up on the right path. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Alley Cat Cycles. I'm on Bowery Street in Iowa City, Iowa. And I'm gonna go talk to Julie, who created Zaza's, an independent Italian market that's becoming a must-stop shop for Iowa City locals. Let's go hear her story. There are more than 600 pasta shapes produced worldwide, and rumor has it that Thomas Jefferson introduced macaroni to America after he enjoyed it in Naples, Italy. Today, the average person in North America eats around 15.5 pounds of pasta annually. Julie went down several different career paths before deciding to turn her passion for cooking into a business, while also providing the local community with the opportunity to buy authentic Italian groceries. Tell me who you are and where we are. Sure, uh, my name is Julie Parisi, and we are at my pasta shop here in Iowa City. It's a pasta shop and Italian market. Um, we make all of our pastas right here, so it's nice people can come in and see it being made right in front of them. And then they can get everything else they might need to create a whole Italian meal. All right, I want to learn about your, your history. Uh, take me back to the beginning with education, work, and anything else that you think would be kind of relevant to your sure. past. I uh, came to Iowa City in uh, 2001 and went to the University of Iowa. I thought by the end of that time I'd go to culinary school instead. <laughs> so I didn't actually go to culinary school. I went to go work in a restaurant uh, that my cousin opened up in New York. 
What type of restaurant? It was an Italian restaurant. Okay. And I was the salad girl, but I learned a lot because I always kept an eye on the chef. And that was a good supplement for culinary school. Yes, exactly. Nice. So I stayed in New York for a while, lived out in San Francisco for a few years. And along the way, I thought, well, maybe I don't want to work in a restaurant. Maybe I want to do nursing. <laughs> then uh, my husband got me to come back to Iowa City after a few years, and I thought I would continue taking some classes here at the university again. We were talking about blood one day, and I said, you know, this isn't for me. Then I thought, well, what should I, what do I know how to do? What do I like to do? And um, I looked into the farmer's market, and there, you were, there were only certain things you were allowed to make to sell, mm -hmm. and noodles were one of them. That's the Midwestern term for pasta. Um, so you could make noodles, and no one was selling them. And I thought, I know how to do this. I'm pretty sure I can do this and sell it. I've been at the farmer's market now for five years, so I obtained the commercial space so that I could sell to grocery stores and kind of expand out a little bit from the farmer's market. What was the breaking point or the decision that allowed you to accept this as full-time? Um, it was really just the loyalty of customers and, um, you know, their encouragement and support at the farmer's market because if I didn't have that base already to work from, if I, if I were just didn't start the farmer's market, let's say, and was just like, I'm gonna open a store, that would never happen to me. Well, you had to prove your concept yes. to yourself. Yeah, I was really the hardest sure. sell, for <laughs> sure. Everyone was telling me, oh yeah, this would be so, you should do this. And I was like, no, I, I'm not ready. <laughs> Do you see yourself continuing to be part of the farmer's market for a while? Yeah, I would love to continue going to the farmer's market as long as I possibly can because the customer interaction, I think, is the most important part of growing the business is sure. getting just their feedback and hearing what it is they want. And so I would start to ask them questions like, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? And their feedback was really the most important thing to helping cultivate and create the product that I make now. So that was, your market research was basically just right out of the customer's mouth. Yeah, it was. We came to know about Zaza's at our wonderful farmer's market when she first started a few years back. We were from the East Coast and I come from an Italian family. I was craving Italian food. So do you make your own that. pasta we as well? Your own well, sauce? I don't make my own pasta because we have her wonderful pastas. According to StartupBizHub.com, Starting a fresh pasta making business does not require a lot of equipment or manpower. The biggest challenge is finding a sustainable market for it. Let's paint the whole picture, tell the whole story of, of this place that we're in right now. I found this place online one day. I came in, I called like frantically, I called the real estate agent and I'm like, I have to come see this place. So I did and I took one look around and I just loved it, absolutely loved it. Did you know this used to be a grocery store mm -hmm. in the 1800s? Yeah. So you already knew that? Yeah. Okay. What kind of changes did that uh, did this building go through over the years? Did it remain a grocery store the whole time? Uh, it was a grocery store from when the building was built in 1856 up until 1972, uh, when it was the last home of New Pioneer Co-op, which is our organic food store here in town. And then this house building sort of fell into disrepair, and we acquired it in uh, January of 2012. Uh, and started the renovations to return it back to uh, its historical correctness, or as close as we could be, uh, to its original structure that it was in 1856. What was the total amount that you needed, to, or, um, or how much did it cost? Basically? Yeah, it was right around 20000 okay. which I felt was pretty good considering. It's low. <laughs> yeah, it's really low. And you approached, did you try to get a bank loan at first, or do anything, or you just went right to family and they said, Yeah. and they gave you twenty. Um, yeah, from several different um, uncles, my brother, yeah, but so everybody kind of pitched in and we got it done. How long have you been open now? We opened May 1st, uh, so a month and a half. Brand new. Yeah. How is it going so far? So far, so good. I'm really happy with the people are, who have been coming in are just excited. Have you done like a, a cost analysis or breakdown on what you're going to have to sell in here to sustain? I figured I would really only need about two to three hundred dollars of sales a day. How did you get into your first store, first grocery store? I did the, I started from the basics of you have to submit your ingredients lists and go through the proper channels and get to talk to the right guy. So right. that's what I did. Legend has it that noodles were first made by 13th century German bakers 
who fashion dough into symbolic shapes such as swords, birds, and stars. The name Zazas, where do they come from? Well, I was nannying for uh, my niece and nephew in San Francisco, and when Roman, my nephew, was really young, I was teaching him Italian, and I said, you could call me Zia, is aunt in Italian, and it never came out Zia, it always came out Zaza, so it kind of is just a name that stuck. He's almost eight now, and I'm Zaza forever. Who taught you how to make pasta? Because now I can say Zaza taught me, right. but who taught Zaza? <laughs> Um, so my grandmother was our neighbor when I was a little kid, so I'd just run across the backyard all the time and go see whatever she was up to in the kitchen. Okay. And she was always making pasta. What's the, the rest of the process, I guess? So this is looks sure. like, a, like a horrible loaf of bread. <laughs> I don't know what well, I'm doing. Basically, we just wrap this up then and let it rest for a few minutes. But I have one over here that is done and rested, so we can roll that out. What is this? This is an herbed flavored pasta. Okay. I happen to have an order to fill with some herbed pasta, so I thought, hey, let's do that today. Excellent. You can squish okay. your pieces, kind of make them a little bit longer and flat. We just take all these. Nice. And go right through here. So, so this process, what is it that we're doing? So right now, if, if we were to go ahead and cut this pasta right away, it would still be really tacky and stick together and it would just not be like the strands that we want. Right. So we do it this way and lay it out flat first, then I'll turn a little fan on it and it'll dry for maybe 15 or 20 minutes just to get a little bit of the moisture out. Now that this has uh, had time to dry out a little bit, yep. what's the final step that we do here to, to make this delicious pasta? We are just gonna cut it into fettuccine. I've come up with this way to fold them because they'll dry this way and then they fit perfectly into the bag. Sweet. Go ahead. Give it a try. All right, you're going to laugh when I slice my finger off. No, no, your finger won't fit in there. It won't, okay. Perfect. Put it right here. All right, so it starts as a big ball of dough. It ends up a big flat thing and then uh, at the end, it gets sold in this. Yeah. How important is our, our sites like Facebook, Twitter, Yelp? Uh, what are you actively involved in and what impact do they have on your business? Sure, um, I use Facebook every day um, to stay in touch with the people who are engaged on that platform already. And I am really lucky. My brother works at Twitter and he helps me sometimes with doing some campaigns there. Another person uh, that was that's in your position, either they're miserable at their job or they always had a dream to do something, what advice would you give to them? If you really feel strongly and passionately about it, it translates, it's like the easiest thing that people can pick up on. You don't get that sense when you go into a, a big store. The people working there aren't, aren't there because they love every product on the shelf necessarily. They're there to, you know, for- Profits. Right, um, and so if you can, give that energy to other people, they're gonna take it and run with it. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Julie do it? Let's find out. She started with around $2,000 in the bank and a 740 credit score. Her first year sales were $9,000, and although she was part-time, she operated at a profit. She received a $20,000 investment to open her doors, and the one word that Julie used to explain what it takes to make it in business is determination. Julie was always noodling around with different ideas until she got strong enough to take Zaza's to the next level. And once you get past a point of no return, things can only get better. It looks like Julie is gonna turn a penne into a fortune. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Zazas. Building a brand is really important. For me, it's all the interactions that somebody has with your company. Whether it's the customer service, their interactions with your product, 
the messaging they see on the website. All of these are different touch points that you can influence somebody's thoughts about your product. Think about every touch point that a customer works with your product and make sure it's as good as possible and consistent across all of those things. Next time on Startup, we travel to Birmingham, Alabama to meet with Jeff, Jason, and Chris. Three brothers born into the restaurant business who started Slice Pizza, a family pizza shop that's reshaping the local food scene. Then we head to Louisville, Kentucky to meet with Emily, who comes from a long line of Kentucky entrepreneurs and created Grace Ship, a company that produces multi-use laptop bags. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Another option for you. Okay. See, this might be a little bit more your color. This one fits perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Like it was made for you. I feel very free. What? So I know we're on opposite sides of the fence, but why do you always got to balk about what you do, huh? American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support startups and those who dare to share their ideas with the world.